So hi everyone, um, my name is Liz Prince and I run a specialist recruitment business for the video games industry called Amicus. Um, I, as well as, as well as recruitment, I've got a real sort of deep passion for diversifying the game sector um, and also on making studios the most open and welcoming that they can be to people from all walks of life. Um, and I've been in the industry for 17 years now. Um, I'm joined today by Lee Burns and Will Hudson, um, both senior Hello. consultants in our team. Uh, and they've both been in games for over 10 years as well. So hopefully between us, we've got lots of um, <clears throat> first-hand experience as to what employers in games are looking for when they're hiring. And we're here to share that experience with you today. Um, the topics that we've got, we normally cover in about two hours, so we're really, really going to jog through today. Um, but please, please do link in with um, any of us, Will, Lee, myself on, on LinkedIn. Um, we're happy to help and give advice anytime. So, um, so even if it's outside of this session, um, please get in touch. Um, so today we want to help you to stand out from the crowd when it comes to job hunting in games. We want to help you um, know where to look for roles, maybe how to decipher a job description, or maybe how to make sure that you don't deselect yourself at that point. <clears throat> Excuse me, how to present a CV, a portfolio that employers want to see. And finally, we want to help you to raise your game in interviews. Um, we'll also do a little tiny touch on confidence and, and a bit of resilience as well. Um, so I hope that all sounds OK. If there are any questions on the way, please pop them in the chat and I'll try and keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, let's go. So I want to start, um, Will, Lee, it, it, mm. let's think about where we're going to look for a job. So where should we be going to? Will, where do you think the, the guys should be going? Yeah, there's quite a few uh, websites out there as well. You've got your um, sort of typical ones that you might see some sort of games jobs on, uh, which people don't tend to look on in the games industry, but uh, websites like Indeed um, is, is kind of the more popular one we're kind of seeing lately. Um, the more games related ones, I'd say, is probably Games Job Live, Tiger, Games Industry mm -hmm. Um but of course, not forgetting applying directly on the studio's websites as well, mm -hmm. because sometimes, uh, especially if they're a smaller studio, they might not have the budgets to post on these third-party websites. They might just keep things purely on, on their website. Yeah. Lee, any more to add on that one? Yeah, I mean, the, a couple of that, that you might not initially think of, things like LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, quite a lot of people post jobs on LinkedIn, but also uh, sort of post comments on LinkedIn with, with sort of links to jobs. Uh, ArtStation has been doing a really good job recently um, from, from our point of view. Twitter, you know, people post stuff out on Twitter as well. Uh, I wouldn't say they they should be your first port of call, but it, it's certainly sort of places worth looking at. There's also um, a games industry Slack channel as well, where mm. there is, a, or, sorry, there's a games industry Slack and there is a jobs channel on there as well. So that's somewhere that um, if you're not on the games industry Slack and you want to be, um, again, let us know afterwards and um, and we'll send you an invitation to that. Um, just thinking about the studio websites, I'll mention a couple of things um, about how to map that out in the UK. If you haven't seen it, there's gamesmap.uk. Um, so UK, which is one of the trade associations for the games industry, has a, a sort of, what's it called, Lee? Um, an it's a game dev map. Something like that. Well, there's two, there's two actually. Um, there's one that's gamesmap.uk, which I think is the UK one, and there's games dev map as well. But basically, it's just to give you an idea of where might be um, a there might be a studio when you didn't know that was there was going to be in that sort of location. Mm. Okay, so hopefully there's a few places that you can you can start looking. So if we do find a studio that we think has got a job for us, um, Lee, what should we be doing? Uh, reading up, <laughs> research in the studio for sure. Um, I think a lot of studios recently have sort of upped their game in terms of trying to, to give a view of themselves mm. to potential employees. You know, so go on their website, you know, check out sort of um, their social media channels, yeah. um, find out what sort of content they're publishing, how they publish it, where they're publishing it. Um, things like LinkedIn could be quite useful as well, again, for more, you know, physical size, how long they've been going, maybe even, you know, things nice to know where, where do a lot of them come from, you know, you might find 
a lot of sort of ex at such and such a company there that, that you might have yeah. to sort of <clears throat> friends who've worked there before you know what kind of backgrounds do the people have I think it's funny isn't it we talk about LinkedIn as recruiters a lot and I, I don't think it's it's naturally necessarily everyone's sort of social or you know media hangout but mm. um well you can see quite a lot about a company on LinkedIn can't you yeah, definitely now. Um, when I first joined you know, 10 years ago, there wasn't this much information on LinkedIn with uh, companies. Now it tells you things like uh, little analytics of like, you know, how long the company been going, the company website, who works there. Um, I think there's even an analytic on there of like what companies they've come from as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. well when you start sort of digging into people's profiles and experience, you'll start to see, you know, their own personalities. You might see them have worked on Lee's just touched upon this they've worked on a game you might like mm-hmm. and you might think oh if I'm lucky to get an interview there something to talk about something so you, talk you, about. you're always get, gathering that intel and gathering that research yeah. until the point no great I think I think more and more as well and I hope this is something that's useful to you um, but that's sort of about us on the website you know where mm-hmm. what, where a company's come from what their leadership looks like um and, and putting things out, as Lee said, on social channels, it's kind of, does it resonate with you? Because I think one of the biggest things for us is although we're talking to you about what employers look for, this is about your search for your career move. So this should also be about what you're looking for and, and how that matches with your values and, and so on, as well as your skill set. So I wanted just to spend a couple of minutes on the job spec, if that's okay, Um, because we do feel as though, especially when I talk to groups of women on things like women in games, um, women are very often put off by long lists of of skills and lots and lots of things that that people or employers put on a job spec. Um, So my phrasing to you is always, please don't be put off by a job spec that is as long as the Bible looking for a unicorn covered in gold leaf, because a lot of job specs are wish lists. So again, there is a a gender split here where typically, and again, lots of research into this, but typically women will look at a job spec and think that they have to fulfill every requirement before they'll actually put themselves forward. Um, Men generally are looking at about 40% of that spec and then thinking that they can probably put themselves forward. So think like a man, check the the top three skills on something, see how you feel about those, consider what transferable skills that you think you might have that match if you haven't got exactly what they're looking for. But on confidence here, I just want to say you have skills and competencies that are valuable to others. So even if you're looking at the most entry level job and thinking, you know, what on earth do I have to offer? You have competencies around how you learn. You have competencies about how you think, how you work with others, how you handle information, how you influence others. So you belong and you deserve a job as much as anyone else. So please don't deselect yourself on the basis of this wish list that that studios tend to create for themselves. Okay, so we decide to apply, I hope. Let's talk about CVs and cover letters. So let's some some tips from Will uh, on CVs first. Yeah, uh, you wouldn't believe it even even now. uh, I still get CVs from people with um, no phone numbers. (laughs) No contact. (laughs) No contact info, just an email. And and sometimes emails fall into spam. Sometimes you miss it. Hey, let's chat. What's your number? And and sometimes you might miss that. Um, so yeah, check your spam filter just in case. But yeah, more importantly, make sure your uh, your, your phone number and contact details are on there. So we, you know, we can Twitter reach, phone number, uh, put yeah. it all. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, even if it's like a LinkedIn. Sometimes I've had to go yes. around around the curve and find mm-hmm. someone on LinkedIn and message them to say, "I've got your application. There's no number. Let's you know, let's talk." Um, so some things as well. Yeah, just making sure you know what your work experience. Making sure the most recent is you know, at the top of, of, of the CV as well. I've had ones mm. where I've scrolled down and seen early career, and then I've gone to see the relevant stuff on, on page two. That should be way up higher you know, on, on, on the list. 
Um, they, yeah, they're just two that I can think of. Lee, I don't want to steal your limelight. So have you got any more to add on that one? <laughs> no, I mean, CVs are subjective at the best of time, but you're right, you know, clear, concise, contact details at the top. Try and make it clear to an employee, uh, employer, you know, who are you? What do you do? What are your skills? You're right. The most relevant information and experience that you have should be front and center. It should be the first thing they find. That might be usually maybe your most recent work experience. It might be the course that you've done recently. Mm -hmm. It might even be the game jam you attended. I, I wouldn't, I don't think it's a bad thing if you, you put sort of, you know, the extracurricular stuff front and center you know, after sort of name, job, uh, contact details, a bit of a profile, you know, here's what I am, here's what I'm looking for. Um, if it's the most relevant stuff to the role you're applying to, then put the game jam stuff there. If you've yeah. done sort of extracurricular stuff like that um, you know, or the education, if that's the most relevant. Definitely. I think um, especially if people have worked on projects anywhere mm. in, in education or perhaps outside of education, what whatever that is that, that you can show. And I think probably the biggest thing for us is, is making sure that you talk about what you have done. Um, it's great to showcase the team and it's great to showcase what you've achieved together, but employers want to know what you've been responsible for. Um, so really highlight that. Um, yeah. So this is what the team produced and this is what I, I did on that. Yeah, um, I, I, think, I think the CV, you know, they're not looking to to know what you've done. They're looking to know what you've done that's relevant to the role. Yeah, it's yeah. which is not always the same thing. Um, and and proofread it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And look, even even the the most concise, diligent person on the planet will make mistakes. Always, always, if you can get a second set of eyes on a yeah. CV. Um, we do it internally with emails and things like mm -hmm. that. I'll send stuff to Liz or Will, and mm -hmm. they'll back and they'll they'll pick up bits that I've just missed. So yeah, because you just don't, don't you? Mm. Yeah. So if if we haven't got any work experience, um, let's just spend a couple of minutes on talking about what are the things that that we can um we can do to build up some information, things to put on CV. Any thoughts on that? Well um do you mean in terms of extracurricular work and whatnot well I think um one of the things that we were talking about that with a few people is um if they've got something that they want to maybe get some feedback on from a studio all right yeah sure so you've got um you've got quite a few uh, avenues with this one you, you've obviously got online portfolios but we, we I hear it like quite a lot on LinkedIn you get uh, artists especially but with this one and designers just put, put their new portfolio up on LinkedIn to say here's my new portfolio um, mm -hmm. Can someone take a quick look at it and give it a quick critique? Um, you know, you're putting yourself out there and that's what you're doing in an interview format anyway. And it can be quite daunting. And, you know, I, I fully appreciate that. But it's going in for that second set of eyes uh, thing we, we spoke about earlier. It's getting industry professionals that you should be linking in with on, you know, on a daily basis on a fantastic network and site who can give you that advice uh, and put you in the right direction before you start going to those interview formats. Um, that's just one just, example. No, no, totally. And on that point, um, Sarah has said to us that um, Sarah's quite connected well on, on LinkedIn, but not had any luck. Um, no, Sarah, I don't want to um, ask you to, to particularly sort of um, chat through what you've been doing, but I, I think it's not it's not enough just, just to create those connections. It's about what you then do with them and what you feel confident enough to do with them, I think. So when we went back to what we were saying earlier about how much information there is on LinkedIn about an organization. Um, you can see all the employees of an organization or a studio on LinkedIn if you go on to their company, who's working here. Um, if you're an artist, maybe seek out a, a lead art person there or a senior artist or somebody perhaps who has a portfolio somewhere on ArtStation that, that you resonate with, it looks like your style. Those are the people. So it, it's it's it's. Uh, I agree, um, Will. You can put something out there that's asking for critique, but you can also pincer in and ask. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. specifically go and ask somebody, um, because that that creates dialogue with the studio, with an individual, and also keeps creating that network. 
it builds relationships doesn't it like you said I mean and and, uh, and uh, uh, we're not saying sort of just spam every artist you find on LinkedIn mm. and tell, tell you know feedback on my work please um you know if you can if you can do the research if it's an artist at a studio that you love or you played a game they've recently worked on you know mention that up front um loved your work or oh, that a lot of artists in the industry have art station or, or similar mm-hmm. website portfolios have a look at their stuff you know yeah. i love the the sci-fi stuff you put on art station recently i really like the style of your work and i'm you know looking to sort of get my foot in the yeah, door of the industry yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love any feedback here's a link to my portfolio and yes you know sometimes they they won't look at it um but it only takes one or two to kind of mm-hmm. feedback and give you some really useful critique um, um and the, start the- building the, the last thing on that as well is to also ask whether the studio has any art tests as well. Uh, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. focusing on art, I didn't mean to do that. But or co-tests. Or co-tests, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if there are tests that are given at interview, um, you know, it may be that they, it, it's something for you to case study. It's a real life example of something, you know. Um, so, yeah, use LinkedIn to build that network and use that network, um, not just to be connected, if, if that makes sense. And events as well. There's, now we're allowed yes, to go out again. Course, Yay. Well, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, be, be prepared to, uh, you know, if networking is not your thing and, you know, maybe it's not many of our things, actually, but um yeah, be prepared with a couple of questions for, for people. Know your icebreakers if you're able to go to events, you know, um, and, and maybe go with a friend. That's, that's my thought. Uh, business cards are something to consider. Yeah. Well. I know it might sound cheesy or old school, but if, if, you know, if it is daunting to talk uh, to people at, at those events, just drop off a, a business card and say, I'd like you to check out my work and you know yeah. that's all the conversation you need to do if you if, you know if, if you're not particularly sort of keen on on those kinds of environments it, it can help okay so I've got something to put on a CV I know where I want to send it um do I send the say, same CV to every job then Lee is that what I do god no <laughs> no I mean as we said at the beginning that the most important element most important thing is with your CV is to put relevant information front and center for the job um, that you're applying to. And, and that might change depending on what role it is. You will have sort of a standard template and, and probably not much will, will change too much on it, but it's moving things around because naturally the human brain puts more importance or value on, on things at the top of the list rather than at the bottom. You know, so it's these subtle little things that mm-hmm. can help you catch a, 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 a CV reviewer's eye. You know, if the first two, three, bullet points on the job spec talk about specific skills or, or areas of art or code or whatever the, the job is mm-hmm. make sure those are the top two or three bullet points on your work experience if you've done them um you know it, it doesn't or if you're studying them as well oh, yeah studying them or worked on them or yeah. through personal projects you know if it's again art just because it's sometimes more tangible you know experience of working on hard surface models fine make sure that's the first thing you talk about if, if you've done mm-hmm. it um on your work experience or college course or, or, mm. or, or school or whatever. Um, Dan's asked a question here. Um, if I, So if I don't have much experience, so I, I don't, I'm not sure I understand this bit, Dan, if everything is relevant, how can I make my CV stand out that way? I'm not 100% sure I understand that question. Will, do, do you, because uh, I'm happy if it's not me. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming here, of course, if, um, Dan, if you mean basically if you're going for a, you know, a, environment art role for example and then this is your first kind of job in the industry um my, my answer on that would be going back to the earlier points we made about showing off the working from you know past sort of game jams and things just showing things you've done that that make relevant. you relevant and, and stand out to, to, to that job hopefully that answers your question um all right okay so yeah. so don't have a lot of dev experience yeah. transferring to the games industry again yeah going back to the earlier point the game jams if, if you if you uh, you know from a coding background and entered into the into the games industry then yeah they, they want to see some maybe some games you've made in your own time and um, just showing demonstrating that you've got a bit of a passion for the industry that you want to move into i think um as well this idea of transferring in that's that's something that um uh, we're gonna uh, we need to talk about a cover letter right so i think 
cover letters are seen as a little bit outdated, but I would say that this, Dan, is where you are going to showcase what you have got, yeah? Because um, it may be that you don't have every single piece of relevant games industry experience, but there are going to be things that will be transferable. Um, and for me, the, the cover sheet or the cover letter, why do I call it a cover sheet? That's such a recruitment term. Uh, the cover letter is, is where you're going to, to map your experience across the job spec. Lee, any other thoughts on that? No, agreed. Like you said, I, I think, and it's also important on a cover letter to, to I want to say grab the ball by the horns, to address the areas where mm. where if if you you know open with whilst i know i don't have this experience here's what i do have that mm. i believe is uh, applicable or here's what i've been doing to earn or, or, or learn those skills and areas because again it's it's showing number one a, a self-awareness that yes i know i haven't got everything i'm not pretending i i do but here's what i do have and here's what i believe is valuable and, and here's what i've been doing on my side to sort of make myself, you know, a, 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 an attractive option uh, or, or yeah. understand more about the industry in general. You know, if you just say, I haven't got experience and then you leave it at that. Yeah, it's like, not going to work. Give think, us more. Um, what are you doing on your side? Yeah, th there's a really, really good example of someone who I know is, um, is in the industry who, and, and we'll talk a little bit about applications in a second, but I think he applied for 90 odd jobs before he got the one that he's in, right? So there's an awful lot here about resilience, isn't there? And understanding mm -hmm. that you are carving your way into your career step. But he he told me that he was given that job, not because I think even the hirer said to him, you are not the most experienced, but I like you the most. Mm -hmm. And that is so, so important in an industry that is a passion industry. It's like TV, it's like film, it's about the love of the, of the sector and, and of what you're creating. So if you can demonstrate passion, enthusiasm, um, research, which is what we've been talking about, um, and, and some transferable skills or skills that you have got and... and um, put together outside of education, outside of work, that you can bring in and demonstrate as a package, um, then that is going to be as much of a foot in the door. I'm not saying it's going to get you the job. I can't guarantee that, but it will at least get you the point where you should be able to be noticed. Mm. Um, Brittany's just said something that she did before she got the industry role is note down everything that may be applicable to the job role. Great. So, um, so you, you, absolutely. All of these, these values, it's, it's what I tried to touch on earlier about the things that you have got. Um, I, I, again, I'll come on to that, but I really do want us to try to move away from focusing on the, I haven't got mm -hmm. and try to focus on the, what I have um, so that you can start to really weave those into your job applications rather than focusing on the gap too much. Okay, so let's breeze on. So, um, so we've got ourselves a CV. We've definitely need a tailored, a tailored CV, but a definitely a tailored cover letter, um, something that is mapping yourself, your own experience, whatever that is, to the job spec um, that you've got. Um, so what, what if I want to, does, does it matter, uh, Will, if I apply to the same studio more than once? Um, in short, no, but time it a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the way to do that is when you start, when you start looking for jobs, it's quite easy to apply for one and then go on another website and apply for another. And especially now, websites have made it so easy for people to, to apply for jobs mm -hmm. and it can be quite, quite addictive. But um, what you what you need, it, it is to be fair. Uh, but what you what you need to be doing on your side is when you are sending out these applications is is keeping track. Um, maybe open a, mm -hmm. a Word doc or a table or, or a spreadsheet if you're an Excel lover mm -hmm. like me, um, and, and just keep track of when where you applied, when you applied, and more importantly the, the results as well. Um, just so you can keep track and maybe look at applying again in, in six months' time if you know you were unsuccessful. But 
in that time as well, I would probably look to, you know, look to maybe send them something a little bit different. Maybe you've worked on a new piece of work in that instance. Don't just keep sending them the same thing over and over again. Um, I think Einstein had a, a saying with, with, with that one. Um, <laughs> make, make sure you're doing something a little bit different every time, whether it's a new piece of work, if you are planning to apply to, you know, to, to that same role again. But in short, um, no, it, it, it doesn't so matter. Keep keep good records though, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, because what what you don't what you don't want to be doing is tripping yourself up and um, you know, getting feedback from a CV application, but then you're not quite sure which you know what it was for, where's it for. That's really not good. Um, I've just seen that Shawnee has turned her CV or, um, into a D and D character sheet. Nice. Um, that there is a lot of creativity, obviously, in this sort of industry. Um, some studios love it. Some aren't, aren't interested. Uh, you've just got to absolutely pick your audience there. And if it's if they resonate with that, it's amazing. Um, be prepared to have something a little more traditional mm. and something perhaps that, that you feel is kind of more about your personality too. Um, I'd, I'd send both if it was me I would send absolutely you're right it depends on the audience some some clients will will love it and some yeah. won't they it just want to see the info exactly. there's nothing wrong uh, assuming the size far, uh, far size but you know you could send both cool funky CV and mm-hmm. you know standard plain CV you could even label them like that if, uh, from a yeah. sense of humor point of view but you know because so again you, you, you're yeah. self-aware enough to know but, that and- and it's about, you know, this is about authenticity as well. Mm. So, you know, Ian, you, you're worried about being unprofessional. I, I get it. But and I do sort of say this quite often to people. But if that studio doesn't respond well to that, then it's not your home. Right. And mm. you know, this is about your career step. It's not just about them judging you. Um, if they judge you and they don't like it, then sheesh, off they go. Um Okay, uh, and I'm uh, Kat, the duplicator job postings on LinkedIn, eek, I can't do anything about that, I'm really sorry. Um, but yeah, just try and trail your way through them if you can. Mm, sorry. Okie doke, so let's just um, touch on portfolios because I know quite a lot of people like to chat about um, portfolios. We definitely need one, Lee, do we? I'd say it depends on discipline. Um, if, you're, if you're looking to get your foot in the door, well, I'd say for sure art yeah art, definitely art almost certainly with code as well it's hard uh, design is a bit harder and, and production is harder as well but um, you need to show examples mm. of your work or you know, to, to validate your experience you know it, it's not enough to say I'm, I, I'm a good artist you have to show that you're a good artist um, so yeah I would certainly say yes you should be linking to a portfolio on your cv um yeah and a lot of our clients are expecting that and and if i'm truthful i would say that sometimes that's pretty much the first place they go absolutely um, yeah so you've got your dnd character uh, cv but they're still on your portfolio like, oh. um okay so listen rattle through will some top tips for um a, a good portfolio um, making sure your link works, <laughs> go yeah. back to the, uh, to the one there. Um, but also just wanted to go back to sort of portfolios because I know, uh, I know Jessica who's in the audience who's um, in marketing, you know, for example, one, one thing to maybe uh, demonstrate on your, your field of expertise is um, complete the case studies, you know, if things like yeah. you manage budgets or anything like that at all, uh, or campaigns you've managed, just how you were involved in this. So a lot of the stuff we're tying in today, appreciate we're talking a lot about art code and design, but we just want to, Make sure we're not forgetting about the marketeers, mm. the audience is there as well. Um, but yeah, the a uh, few things uh, we I think we touched upon um, a bit earlier was uh, looking at those kind of pieces that are relevant to the role. If you're going for an environment position, make sure your portfolio, your first one or two or three pieces are environments. Um, if you're going for a character role, vice versa. If you're going for a level design role, make sure your top three, in your opinion, uh, level designs that you've done are the first three pieces we see um, going into the user experience we, we, we tend to look in a certain direction to just make sure they're there as the first thing that you see um, even send it to people like it's a bit of a, a left field tip I give to people but um, show it to you know 
your parents maybe who aren't in the industry and ask their opinion as a neutral point of view where did they look first um what what piece drew out to them the most because you wouldn't believe how much that experience is quite valuable um mm. from, mm. from someone who's, who's not in the industry um little things as well um breakdowns uh, as well whether it's uh here's my environment pieces if you click this tab here's my character piece if you click this tab or here's my level design piece if you click this tab um looking at things that when you do go into the individual pieces uh, from an artist's point of view uh, things like uh, what engine what was used how long did the piece take you uh, and one thing i actually love as well is uh, when i see drawings on a on a post-it note and then i see this this great amazing model on 3ds max from the first concept that came um a bit like seeing the stage one to the stage you know five these are just little, little things that i've I, i've picked up on um Liz, mm. from, from what i've seen um lee <laughs> yeah you're there? right showing you're working out i, I think is sometimes yeah. important because because <laughs> Work workflow is 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 an important part of of a lot of sort of industry roles. Really, how you get from A to B, not just what B looks like. Um, in terms of you know, if you're sort of struggling from a portfolio point of view as to what to put in there, how to show it, things like this. Um, again, I've broken record, but LinkedIn. You know, I, I'm I'm a programmer and I want to know what a good programming portfolio looks like okay go on linkedin search programmer find someone who's recently joined the industry at perhaps a company you admire um you know okay someone who's joined there within the last six months and, and you can do searches like that um there's a very very good chance that they'll have a portfolio and if they do it's, it's almost certain it's that portfolio that did a lot of the work for them in terms mm -hmm. of getting the job that's what you're up against you know that that's sort of your benchmark then and and if you see these things and you think oh, i like the way they laid that out or that's a cool idea obviously don't copy it but it, it sometimes can help you to kind of understand where i'm at and where i need to ideally get to i mean be careful with that you know you will if you stumble across some that there's always the, the the ridiculously unnaturally talented you know individuals who are just phenomenal at, at what they do and and you know, if you find someone like that and you look at the portfolio and think, I can never do that. There's only one or two at that level, don't worry. Um, and, but, and so so many people say to us, don't they, still, that when they look back at their first piece in their portfolio and where they are X years later and so on, you know, it, it's night and day. So everybody starts somewhere. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, put, put and, a poll up and, and say, show, show me your first piece of artwork. That, that will, uh, yeah, that will make a change. Um, which sites are best for a game or art portfolio? Uh, ArtStation, yeah, um, that that's certainly where we would go. Will. It's almost the industry standard now, I think. Yeah, ArtStation. I think Wix mm. when I first joined. I'm showing my age now, aren't I? Uh, but yeah, I remember Wix when I first joined was was one. But um, I'm working a few art positions at the moment. They all seem to be ArtStation at the moment. Just seems okay. nicely nicely laid out. GitHub for code. Uh, again, if you search through LinkedIn, you'll find, you know, people use different, different stuff. But then yeah. Find the like, one that works. Um, uh, there's a couple of shout outs here for Wix, Will, so you're not on your own, you're okay. <laughs> um, okay, so um, let's move on to interviews. Okay, so let's say that everything that we have put together, hopefully, has got us um, through the door and they've asked us for an interview. So let's let's start with the prep. Um, Lee, what, what are we prepping first up? Re research. Research the company again, sort of build on what you will have already done at the beginning, read about, uh, read the about us, check out LinkedIn, check out what one big thing from a games industry point of view, check out their products, uh, mm. their games. Um, absolutely. If you can get a chance to sort of play a couple of them, great. Um, if you can't, you know, I, I appreciate these things cost money you know look at youtube videos YouTube. And, and trailers yeah. and things like this and just to get a bit of a feel about the types of stuff that that they make yeah. um I, I think because sometimes clients will ask opinions won't they at interview. Hmm. it's just a general question yeah what did you think of our games and yeah you you've got to be surprised actually at how many people haven't played those games when they're going for interviews yeah that, it, that is an immediate standout it's a killer isn't it when someone says oh what you know have you played our games no no yeah. okay great yeah just <laughs> it's good to see your interest enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. exactly exactly yeah. um so talking i think again not forgetting earlier what we talked about in terms of this being a two-way assessment so when mm. you have got an interview call 
This is about you checking them out as well, going back to their social channels, seeing what they're sharing. Does it resonate with you? Does it speak to you? Um, what about their leadership? Just all of those things that give you a feel for their organisation, their culture, before you even go and meet them. Hmm. Um, I, think, uh, oh, I, was, sorry. I was going to say, I think as well, but one of the, uh, the obviously interviews are a nerve wracking thing for most mm. people. I think I think it's 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 quite natural to, to be nervous. Um, the, the more you can arm yourself in terms of sort of familiarity and, and, and understanding of the role, even things like you know, go, go on, find um find the profile, the LinkedIn profile of the people who are interviewing you, find a video if you can of them doing an interview somewhere, uh, like a presentation. Yeah. You, you become familiar with the face, you hear what their voice sounds like mm -hmm. and, and it's it, it puts you more at ease because these are things that you already know before you even talk to yeah. a person, you know, and um, it can just help take the edge off, I think, sometimes. I think one thing that we're very, very keen on as well is that so when we're representing a candidate, which is our kind of role in the industry, um, we would ask them if there is anything that they think they need us mm. as the client for to, to really kind of help the interview process bring the best out in you. So if, if you're our candidate, so let's give an example. A lovely lady that we had an interview recently said to us that she had Asperger's and in an interview situation, she would struggle to hold eye contact. Now, that's super, super important for a studio to know because they may not understand that. If, if that's something that's just part of who you are, then you need to let them know because it will just help you feel more confident and you need to know that they understand you um so that's only a small example there's absolutely loads and loads out there um sometimes people need a lot more information about who them they're going to meet we've been asked quite rightly for a picture of a location um we'll send um we'll send anything right anything that makes it right for you through the process mm -hmm. but if you don't ask if you don't share that I know that's I know it feels scary and so many people say to us should I tell them about whatever it is and again we all chatted about authenticity earlier if you don't tell them and it doesn't come up in interview or you get the job and then it's just not right because of that sort of that lack of authenticity it might just not be the right home for you so Let's um, let's get all of that up front and see how they they deal with that. And that's a really good part of the assessment for you. Yeah, it's it's, it's a great way to sort of get a feel for a company as well. Absolutely. You know, they, interviews are not one size fits all. No. You know, they, they never have been, although, uh, no. you know, and, and I think a lot of studios, especially the more um, uh, staff focused employee focused you know studios are, uh, are understanding that now um, yeah but but they need a bit of help Just and info from you yeah absolutely yeah. okay so well if it's online the interview which is really typical these days um a couple of pointers for people what should they be making sure about yeah, definitely. Uh, check check your Wi-Fi connection, of course. Mm -hmm. Just make sure um, everything's all in, in working order. And if you've got quite a um, sort of heavy sort of backgrounds, uh, you know, you want to sort of blur it out. A lot of these um, online softwares now, you you, you can. Uh, or if you're something like me, my beautiful Beauty and the Beast backdrop, you want it in picture, yeah, go for it. You know, as long as it's sort of simple in, in, in that respect. Um, but yeah, it just good connection just making yeah. sure um quiet place quiet place yeah you're not going to be disturbed um what, what, one thing I, I like to sort of tell the people in sort of telephone um and, and you know online interviews as well is you you know they can't always see everything that's around you you might have some questions like on some one side or some little you know visual prompts for you uh, one thing that I used to do when I was looking for a job in, in uni was um, having a pen and piece of paper in front of me when they asked me a question I used to write it down just off off camera um, and then if I felt myself going off on a tangent I sort of just quickly looked down and saw what the question was just to sort of bring yourself back to making your answers a little bit concise but uh, hmm. yeah they're probably the main main ones do a I was going to say do a trial run as well yeah. you don't want to find out two minutes before the interview that your mic doesn't work you or you haven't downloaded a thing plug-in or something yeah. so, yeah, do so a if, we're, if we're face to face um 
I, I think probably the biggest question people ask us is how 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 late what time should I turn up um five to ten minutes before no more um yeah don't don't eat into that sort of time frame too much but if you get there early you know you can busy yourself with a cup of coffee somewhere but mm. um, and and also really I know this is these are really minute minutiae types of things but have that contact number handy just in case you're running late there's so so many people that we you know we have an interview who are running late and haven't just don't remember to take our number or anything and we can't help you to help the client and tell them so yeah little practical things like that okay so we're at the interview we're in the interview we've arrived on time we're doing it all fine so um what just a couple of tips um lee in in the interview from you uh take your time uh i know again the, the ner nervousness can can be sort of the, the tricky thing within an interview but you know take your time have a glass of water um make sure you know if you're not sure about questions you know you can you're allowed to ask the interviewer to repeat it if you can't ask a question you know if you can't answer a question um you know ask ask maybe to come back to it um what else is there uh be honest i think that's the biggest thing don't try to don't try to give them the answer that you think they want if you don't know you know if, if you don't know something if they ask you have you ever used this you know be honest um and say because you can end up getting yourself into cul-de-sacs at that point if you mm -hmm. try and not that anyone would but you know you try and blag your way oh yeah yeah I've well it's that. true <laughs> yeah no, absolutely um okay cool i i just wanted to spend a couple of minutes on um this idea of self-promotion in an interview as well so um this is where i was what I mentioned earlier about focusing on what you have got rather than kind of sitting and explaining the gaps. Um, and especially if I'm talking to the women on the call here, um, please focus on a couple of things in terms of how you talk about your experience and be wary of underselling. Um, women have much more of a tendency to say, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, or um, sorry, I'm just wondering, maybe, and those sorts of phrases can kind of inadvertently devalue the words that follow. Um, typically, when men are asked how they might handle a new responsibility, they could respond with, yeah, I can do that. Whereas, again, more typically, women are more likely to respond with, I haven't had that responsibility yet, or with more exposure in that area, I could. But the difference between those, those sort of answers might lead to a belief that the man has the more relevant experience, which might not be true. So I guess what I'm trying to do is encourage you to get comfortable with a style that works for you to promote yourself in an authentic way. So think about what you have achieved, what you've been responsible for, and then um, obviously asking ahead of the interview, as, as Liam will have said, so that you can prepare some relevant examples that maybe you don't have to rely so much on memory. Because if it's me in an interview, the first thing that goes is my memory, right? So I, I would take notes. I definitely, I don't care if I have a pad with me. That's who I am, right? So again, you know, if they, if they want someone who's a memory merchant, they're not gonna hire me. Um, I will just say this because, again, I said this at a Women in Games conference recently because it absolutely blew my mind. But a really, really new study published by the University of California in San Diego revealed that overqualified, overqualified women and sufficiently qualified men tend to be hired for the same job at the same grade. Now, if that's not evidence of, of women underselling um, then I don't know what is. So please, please be aware of that when you're thinking about how you express your experience um, uh, at an interview. And my last piece is be yourself, be vulnerable, not self-deprecating, be passionate and above all be authentic and know that you're good enough because you are the talent in the room. Okay. So there's a point at most interviews where the interviewer will say, have you got any questions for us? And 
we think this is one of the most fundamental bits of the interview, right? So we want to spend a couple of minutes on it. Um, and my first, please, 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 is please don't use this time to ask about salary or holidays. Now, I'm not saying that you can't ask about salary or holidays at some point during this process, but please don't make it then. Okay, so... Lee, well, let's talk about some things that we could use that time for. I'd be asking things like, um, what do you, what, what does the team do as a team outside of work? You know, do the team do often have like work, you know, work nights out or game nights, just generally what the, you know, what, what, what the culture's like, what TV shows are people watching, just to sort of get a bit of a, a feel for, you know what the you know the water cooler chat i think someone called it to me yesterday just getting a general feeling for you know what what your potential new new employees are going to look like um could be asking things like um a direct question in the sense of uh, if you've done your research on on these people if any of your interviewers have recently joined the company mm -hmm. asking them what made them join the company flip it powers in your hands there uh, flip it to the to the interview ask things like what what you know what, what, what's the reason you, you started working here? Or if someone has been there for a while, what, you know, what's the reason they've stayed there? Mm -hmm. You know, these are just two things that I would be asking anyway. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Lee? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, th think about the things that are important to you in a, yeah. in a career move. Um, you know, where do you sort of ultimately want to sort of progress your career to, to talk about that? You know, what sort of, you know, What's, what's the career progression look like? Maybe you want to be proactive in, you know, things like uh, women games or, or or limit break, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with mentoring, you know, ask them, do you, you know, are they involved in in, in these sorts of things already? Were you, you know, are there people already doing that um, internally in the company? You know, are they proactive with, with other things? You know, is there opportunities to be mentored? Um, mm -hmm. These are, these are, good questions to sort of give you a bit more of a feel about uh, yeah, about the culture uh, yeah about the culture really that's um i think what uh, uh, me uh, i think sean has just said uh yeah what does a typical work day look like uh, uh, i'm sort of hoping sean that at that point i uh, hope by that point they will have um talked through that with you but you're absolutely right if if they haven't and you still don't feel that you know what that's going to look like for you then definitely proudest achievement i love that um that's that's really similar to the um you, you know so if you know from your research that someone's been working there a while that that would be amazing to hear um definitely anything that leads you to understand culture um uh, sean has put a question there about how would you describe your studio's culture i think that's that's great it's really open um, but it, it might lead to an answer that is quite um, sort of generic, potentially. I, I don't know. I'm just um, so perhaps think about some questions that are really important to you about culture. Um, so, for example, like Lee was saying, um, you know, mentoring is really important to me or, or my personal growth is also as important as my career growth. Um, do you have mentoring within the organisation? If it's a big group, do you have a big organisation? Sorry, do you have um, employee resource groups? Anything specific that might be interesting to you? Um, if it's a smaller business, it's, you know, how, how do I connect with, um, if it's women, for example, how do I connect with women outside of, of the organisation? If there's only maybe 20 of us here, do you support but, um, membership of things like women in games, etc.? Um, those are the things that, not just the, the blanket answer, which you would hope would be, you know, pretty much what you've seen on their website, but actually what are the day-to-day -day things that are important to you about the, the culture? Um, and definitely if there's training. Um, Andres, put if you can improve one thing about the job or workplace, what would that be? Oh, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, likelihood of promotions, yeah. Yeah. Um, so some, sometimes we find people are worried about saying um, about promotion specifically in the first interview. And the reason for that is they 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 don't want to seem uh, not, not enthusiastic about the job that they're going for. Do you know what I mean? So um, kind of 
making sure that you're talking about the longer term. You know, I'm really looking for somewhere that I can um, stay and grow within the, the company. Mm-hmm. So after I've, I've spent time doing this role that I'm applying for, what, what would you see as my next steps, that sort of thing? Um, I love the, what's your favorite part of working here? I think everyone should be asked that. Um, okay, Jonas has given us, is this a newly created role or someone recently left? Um, normal working day again. Uh, Oh, divisive interview question. They always ask, are there any questions you feel I didn't answer well enough? Is that, Freya, when you're thinking about you at the very end of an interview? Um, I can't see Freya on my screen. Um, I I think that's what I'm reading here. Um, So as as an employer and an interviewer, that's actually a really tricky question. But um, I'm not personally sure I love the idea of saying are there any questions you feel I didn't answer well enough um but I think there are some rounded maybe questions Lee do you know what I'm, I mean yeah you could maybe phrase it more you know are there any questions you've asked that you'd like me to sort of further expand upon or um that you'd like more detail about or yeah well, yeah is there yeah is there, is there anything that maybe I've um, not covered fully enough today. I, mm. I think r- rather than answering well enough, that's not quite. Again, that's looking very much at you know you're not worthy of uh, of your part in the interview. You know anything that we'd we'd like to discuss a little more, um, that sort of thing. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see any. You're issue. asking the same thing, but you're, you're using more yeah positive using language. slightly more positive language. Yeah. Uh, Brittany's given uh, thinking about the most impressive person you've met with a similar job role, referring to the job role you're interviewing for. What was it about them that made them stand out? Wow, gosh, that's that is quite um, again as an employer, that's quite a um, heavy question. Um, mm. It it's it maybe that's a little too strong uh, from that perspective. Thinking about the most impressive person you've met within a similar job role, um, because what if what if you aren't that benchmark, Brittany, and they suddenly start to think, well, actually, oh, no, Brittany's not not as good as that person. I don't know. Do, do you see what I mean? Um, but but definitely you could maybe think about some of the, you know, the, the role I'm going for. Obviously, um, you know, I'm really excited and enthusiastic about the opportunity. Are there other people doing this role? And how did they stand out? Maybe I... I yeah, it's a new, I have to say it's a little bit new one on me, that one. Um, right, is there any, oh, there's another question, Jessica, someone suggested, do you have any hesitations about my suitability at this point? That's a really similar one, Jessica, to the, is there anything I, I haven't covered enough type of thing? Um, I, I, I've been asked that question as an employer, and it, it does make me think about the interview but what I don't want somebody to do is put me in a situation where I have to make a decision then right because I don't want to make gut decisions in the interview I want to go away I want to have looked at everything that I've asked it should be about scoring you know there should be some if if we push um, um, interviewers into a position where they're making good decisions, I'm not overly comfy with that. If I'm truthful, um, I think it would be it would be nice, Jessica, to think about maybe some of those. Um, you know, we've we've talked about an awful lot of topics today. Um, I, I'm I'm uh, you know I'd love your feedback on whether there's anything that you'd like to cover a, a little more do you, do you know what I mean encourage them to come back on something rather than give you an absolute at that point because what if I do have hesitations about you at that point Jessica it's like um I, I don't want to get into a debate with you about it I might just want to invite you back for another interview do, do you know what I mean so I, I like the idea of 
trying to wrap up with somebody and give the mm. opportunity for further discussion, but maybe be careful how potentially combative that is. The, these are my opinions, by the way. Um, Cal has uh, definitely, Cal, we should be putting um, limit break on TCV at 100%. 100%. Um, Dan, I put it on LinkedIn as a professional career development, as a work break, it's under experience. Oh, it being limit break. Um, it, yeah, don't, don't, uh, absolutely. Um, you don't have to hide it anywhere. It's absolutely brilliant that you are doing professional development. Um, yeah, Freya, I, I, you, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm not trying to talk to you as a recruiter on this. I'm, I'm genuinely trying to give my personal having had that question asked of me um it it doesn't add huge value um to the outcome of it if, mm. if that's probably the most important thing to say to you um Shawnee interviewed with some polar studios at a time with some issues in the country so for you absolutely at 100 percent and and Shawnee th this is about what's important to you yeah mm. Um, because if you don't dig out the um, the 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 sort of the the culture of the studio that's important to you, as opposed to the culture of the studio that might have been important to me or to Dylan or to Kat, etc., that's your part in the interview. And again, going back around the circle, if they don't have the right attitude to the community that you are considering or you are part of, then it's not the home for you and you've dodged a bullet, frankly, um, not literally. Um, a couple of the other things that I'd, uh, I'd, I had written down on that point was um, if there's nobody in the interview process that you relate to directly. So, for example, um, if, the, if you're a person of colour and there is no representation of a person of colour on the interview board, um, I would definitely use that opportunity to say, um, what's, the, what's the diversity within the studio? I'm a person of colour. Um, I would be really interested in talking to somebody who, who, who's in your team or has recently joined your team. Or, and I've kind of put, insert what you're interested in, Shawnee, to your point. Um, has anyone joined the, uh, recently that has a family or has a young family, if that's something that, that's important to you? Um, th these are things that you need to dig out because it isn't a one-sided, um, it isn't a one-sided assessment. Oh, there's Ian. Hello, I didn't know you were here. As, uh, okay, as an employer, I like those two questions. They show self-awareness and hunger to improve. Mm, okay, Ian, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I, 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 you are a very forward-thinking employer. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the um, the ones that we were talking about in terms of kind of circling back over anything, or, or was it about the community? I'm sorry, I'm going to mix myself up here, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's really great to hear from you. Um, is there anything else on that? Because I was just going to finish with um, follow up to an interview, yes or no? Because I, I think a lot of people worry about how to follow up and how often and that sort of thing um lee follow up yes or no uh, uh, absolutely <laughs> i think um if you're not following up on on applications you're, you're, you're missing a trick really um so yeah we, we were talking about earlier on about tracking and 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 sort of remember you know tracking where you've applied and when you've applied um but yeah, definitely fresh out of an interview, ideally that day, maybe the day after follow up with an email, just sort of thank people for their time, um, you know, look forward to your, your feedback. That is also another opportunity to, to sort of say, look, is there any, you know, is there any other questions or anything else that you think will support my application? Please do feel free to ask. Um, as Ian was sort of mentioning that self um awareness and putting yourself out there and being open to critique is is not necessarily a bad thing and, and it can be done on on, on a follow-up email as well um but then again you know if you, if you don't hear anything back from that or, or from the interview itself um you know maybe leave it four or five days a week um, yeah. and follow up to ask if there's any feedback um if you don't get any i'd say 
you don't get any feedback from that, maybe one more, one more last poke, mm. you know, a week later might, and then, and then leave it at that. Um, not all studios, they should. We know they should, but not mm. all studios want to sell you feedback. It's frustrating. They're still ghosting, Lee. They're still ghosting. Um, it still in, happens. In the employment world, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that, that would be our, our standard expectation for you as an individual definitely follow up nice email and and that it's you know it's lovely for people to hear from you um another another check-in one more check-in and that's that um yeah if they what you're looking for from rejection is feedback isn't it if it is rejection um you know because you you you're looking to learn to see what else um that you know that to take you forward into the next opportunity um, oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Oh, Shawnee, thank you. Uh, if anyone gets a rejection email that offers feedback, absolutely. Um, and w- again, when we're talking to studios, we we really, really do encourage feedback. And some of the smaller studios are absolutely tremendous at it. Like they'll give you pages of feedback and, and so on. So, yeah, d- do, uh, uh, you know, I know it's time and not everybody has got time for it, but um yeah, absolutely. Oh, brilliant. Oh, that's amazing, Shawnee. Um, we are literally at the hour. Um, and I know we've we have trotted through an awful lot, and and I really um I really appreciate the uh, the conversation that we've had so far. But is there any other questions just quickly before we wrap up? Um, okay, Victoria, so a generic nice email told by a potential employer they didn't have something at the moment, but they'd be in contact if they did. Uh, how do I, well, um, you you don't know if it's a template type email, um, but I would 100% be back in touch with them, uh, reminding them of the interview and, um, or, or, or the, the application and that you're, you know, really super excited still about, uh, about their organisation. Maybe if there's something on... Um, their website if there's a a job that might be suitable etc bring yourself to their attention um on on victoria's thing liz i was going to say as well will mentioned it earlier on it's great with things like that to follow up if you've added new work or done something new you know uh, because that's the reason you're emailing them yeah hi just want you know we spoke a while ago wanted to share some new stuff and you know if there's any new roles let me know Uh, that sort of thing Oh, Dan, is there a trick to following up rejection emails that say don't request feedback? Yeah, move along. They do not deserve your attention. And I'm really sorry that that happens. Um, But yeah, and also don't forget that people like us are here for generic feedback. Yeah, I know we don't run a studio and every studio has its own thing, but you know, you can always ask um, Lee, Will, anyone in the team to just, can you just have a quick look at this? I've changed this. You know, ask for feedback from other people who frankly care more. Sorry. Um, oh, thank you, Lydia. It's been lovely. Um, following up is also an opportunity to say how you're improving. Oh, great. Thank you, Ian. Uh, would you recommend following up after an application yeah. yeah that's always tricky isn't it Cal, Cal? but I, I would say yes um definitely because um it, they, they get lots of applications and and things make you stand out and it's a bit like the Eddie Azard um well, I won't go into it but anyway it, it, it follow up enough but don't follow up too much so it really is a balance and keeping 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 good records is really important so that you know when you last emailed you know the date that you did something so that you know whether you feel like it's been a week it's been two weeks and you'll get a feel for how that balance is um but if you just don't happen if you don't hear from them i'm afraid um yeah some some of them you just need to accept that they're ghosting um with without following up on applications, I would give it three or four days. Usually, if you haven't yeah. heard, I made that might feel so. But it, you, you got to be careful how you word it. You can't. Be, uh, I've applied. Why have I not heard back? That's no. Great. No. I applied a few days ago. Um, really keen on your company. The role sounds great. Would love to hear back. I appreciate your time. That's it. Um, Ian, you're absolutely right. If there's a really rubbish response, then that they, you know, they just haven't got themselves in a place that they're going to be 
right for you. Um, do you list non-commercial workers' experience, um, uh, non-commercial work? Um, it, it, if that's what you've got um, and, and you haven't worked commercially, then that is your experience. It, you're not intentionally misleading anybody. You can, as long as you describe what it was, um, where you were, mm. whether it was paid, unpaid, etc. Um, that's that's absolutely fine. Um, I, I, one thing, a last thing I will say, um, I am a mentor on limit break and my imposter syndrome is killing me at the moment um, because I'm not a designer or a programmer, etc. cetera. Um, if anyone is on the platform and just wants uh, to reach out to someone like me who might be able to talk to them about confidence or about, um, I, I don't know, climbing the ladder, what, whatever it is that, that's not about sort of programming design, et cetera, then um, please reach out. I'd, I'd love to be involved. Oh, that's it. That's awkward. Thanks. So. <laughs> oh, thank you, did you it, so Liz. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Liz, Will, and Lee. That was a really great session and really helpful.